Well, hi everybody, my name is Matt Klaskowski, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the dehaze slider. Okay, it's inside of Lightroom. Uh, Photoshop's Camera Raw has it, On One has it, and we're gonna kind of take a deeper dive into it. I wanna show you, I've got five photos. I wanna show you where, where I think dehaze can actually hurt a photo, because I think that's really important. I think sometimes it gets overused. I wanna show you where dehaze can actually hurt a photo, then I'll show you where I think it can actually help a photo, I'll give you my thoughts behind it, and finally, I'll even show you a couple of tips when you know dehaze works for a part of the photo, but not all the photo, and how you can selectively apply it to just those areas. Let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, before we totally dive into this, I'm doing this inside of Lightroom because it's got the dehaze slider here, which is what we're talking about. If you're in Photoshop, just understand that you have your dehaze in the basic panel, and then you also have your adjustment brush, which has dehaze. It works exactly the same as Lightroom. And if you're inside of On One, don't forget On One has a haze slider too. It's just the opposite um, as far as Lightroom and Photoshop goes, where you know one way makes it more hazy and the other way makes it less hazy. So just keep that in mind. But for the tutorial, we're going to do this inside of Lightroom. So in our first photo, this this photo is actually submitted. Uh, I do a photo makeover series where people send in their photos and I edit them instead of mine. This one was sent in by Debbie Lander and a while back, and I remember editing the photo. And um, I thought it was, I, th I love the mood of the photo. And a lot of people ask me why I didn't use dehaze in it. So uh, here's why. If I just go over here and I crank up dehaze, let's get ourselves a little bit more screen real estate over here as well. Um, if I just go over here and I crank up dehaze, yeah, I mean, I guess I make the photo more contrasty and, and all that. But to me, to me, th this photo doesn't, it doesn't suffer from haze. It's got, fog and it's got atmosphere in it but to me that's that's not haze okay so for for this photo i don't think dehaze is the answer to it i actually like the fog i like the atmosphere that the photo has i would never want to get rid of that i like the the color toning that subdued type of a feeling that we get when we look at a photo like this that has that foggy type weather so for me dehaze isn't the answer although it does give more saturated and contrasty colors but again i don't want that for this photo for me, the answer would be, I'd probably pull back on my highlights, bring in a little bit more detail in that, that sky up here. And then I'd probably go over here to my graduated filter and I'd bring the exposure down a little bit and just take a graduated filter right across the sky. And that's, it's going to be too dark, but kind of position it into place here and just work with that a little bit. In addition, a little bit more highlights and maybe even a little bit of clarity um, up there in that sky. And that, that brings out that that dark kind of, you can see all those low lying clouds and that fog that we have there. To me, that brings it out. I may even add a little bit of clarity overall to the photo and make it a little bit brighter, but that that's what I would look for when I see a photo like this, rather than just crank up dehaze thinking the problem is because it's got a hazy, foggy look. I, I To me, you can't replace that. Like anytime you can get atmosphere in a photo, we want that. Here's another example where I'll, I'll get a lot of questions on using dehaze. So let me go ahead and just reset the photo for you. And I'll, I'll go through a very quick edit. I straighten it a little bit. Um, again, pull back on my highlights, get some detail up there in that sky. I think overall I would warm it. I think overall I would bring up my exposure and my shadows, bring out some of that shadow detail. So somewhere right around there. And the, the questions will start to come, well, how come, you know, back here, if you look in the background, there's a lot more, it's, it's got a hazier type of a look than this foreground does here. We've got a lot of colorful trees back there. Again, there's some low-lying fog and clouds and whatnot. So somebody will say, you know, well, why didn't you use dehaze on that background? Another place where I don't use dehaze is when I want depth, all right? I, I want I want that atmospheric perspective that we get as things are in as things are close to us in the distance, like this rock and this cluster of trees here. They tend to have a crisper, more saturated type colors. As things get off in the distance, they tend not to have quite that much saturation. And you can see that that's depth. And I want that in my photo, or at least sometimes I want it in my photo. In the case of this one, it's exactly what I want. So if I were to use my dehaze techniques, which you're about to see, number one, we could just crank up the slider. Again, that just makes everything contrasty and, and to my eye oversaturates the sky here. So I wouldn't want to go, I wouldn't want to just crank up the slider. 
what I'll do a lot of times is I'll grab the brush, the adjustment brush here, and I'll go over and increase the haze. And then I would go in and just selectively paint it on the parts of the photo that I wanted on. So I could go over here and I could paint it on this whole background. But what I end up doing, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this part here, but what I end up doing is I end up killing all of that, that, that depth that I was looking for in the photo. Okay. The, the thing that separates this, this clump of trees from its background, I, I end up kind of just making everything look oversaturated and contrasty, which is why I wouldn't use dehaze in a case like this, because the depth tells, it brings people into the, the view that I see and kind of helps people realize that this is an expanse of a scene. It really goes deep. And that's why we see that haze in there. So I wouldn't use it in this case. Now let's uh, let's look at one more time where I wouldn't use it, and then we'll take a look at where I I would start to use it. Really quick, a word from our sponsor, which by the way is me. Um, if you would be so kind, where, wherever you're watching this video, uh, I would greatly appreciate it if uh, if you would just subscribe or follow that channel. So if you're watching it on YouTube, you can of course subscribe. And, uh, and then if you want to make sure you get notifications whenever I post a new video, uh, just make sure you ring the little bell that you can do there. And then if you're watching this on Facebook, of course, you can like the page and Facebook also has notifications. So if you want to get notified when I post something, um, go ahead and turn that on there. Okay. All right. Let's jump into, uh, to this example here. So I remember editing this for a group and somebody said, why don't you use dehaze? Well, here's what dehaze does to the photo. All right. Um, why don't I like this? Let's let's forget about the ugly, oversaturated blue background sky that we have here. One of the reasons why I don't like it is because to me, this 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 hazy, foggy look. This is why I took this photo. The play of the light through the clouds and that softness, and the way you kind of see the the little the little rock formation down here, but you don't see all of it. To me, that's why I took the photo. So while I would probably go in here and open up the, the shadows a little bit and maybe do a little bit of, of dehaze, I would never crank that up to the point where it kills it. It makes this look contrasty and sharp because I don't want it to look that way. I want that atmosphere that we have here. So I'd probably go in here, open up that dehaze just a little bit. And then I would do the same thing. I'd go to my brush, the same thing I did in that last example, go to my brush um, open up the, uh, open up the dehaze again, just a little bit. And I might paint a little bit on here just to give it a little bit more color and maybe on the trees, but that's it. I'm using a big feathered brush, a very soft edge brush. So it bleeds in and blends in with all the surroundings here, but I would never want to crank dehaze so much that I lost the atmosphere that we had in this photo. So now where would I use it? Well, uh, a photo like this would be a perfect candidate because this was a, a big scene. I put my 70 to two or 300 on at the time and I zoomed way in and I shot this photo. Um, so I think this is taken at 200 millimeters. Well, I deliberately that there was haze in the distance, this mountain scene, this isn't my, this isn't a, the fault of my camera. This mountain range in the distance was hazy in, in the context of a bigger photo that haze would tell a story of depth. I decided to pick apart a very small and intimate part of that scene. And in, in my opinion, at least, and by the way, don't forget, as much as I can give you my thoughts on this, it's just my opinion. You're welcome to leave it hazy or make it more hazy or make it less if you want. But in my opinion, the haze takes away from what I was trying to do here. I, I want to pick apart a big, a small part of a big scene and really bring it right in front of your face. So in this case, yeah, I would go down here and use the dehaze slider. This is that atmospheric haze that happens, especially this is kind of late morning. So as we get off into that distance there, you're really going to see it. And um, it just takes a, almost a little faded look on it. So I would definitely increase the dehaze. You got to be careful because it's going to mess with the blue in the sky if you do it too much. So if that happens, I've already done it a couple times, but I would just go to the brush tool crank up my dehaze slider and go over here. And the way that I usually do this, especially if I have a sky that I don't want to affect in it, um, the way that I usually do it is I'll crank up that dehaze slider and then I'll use a big brush and I'll get, I'll get as much of it as I can. I'll kind of do a, a quick pass and get the, um, 
get the, the biggest part of it without bleeding over into the sky. And then what I'll do is I'll go down and turn on auto mask. Okay. And by the way, same thing works inside a camera raw, same thing works inside of on one. So on you know, whatever you're using, there is a, a, a haze or a dehaze slider and on one, it's actually the opposite. Uh, it's called haze. And the, the farther you go, the more hazy it gets to the left, it goes less hazy, but same concepts would apply. So I would go in here and I would paint it. Then I would turn on the auto mask setting and then I would go and I would paint along and just keep that center cursor inside of whatever I want to affect. I can't let it go into the blue there because that's when it'll start spilling over into that. I kind of give it a, a pass one direction and then I'll go back and give it another pass because it is a little bit selective in what it picks there. Uh, if you want to see what it's doing, you can go down here. There's a little checkbox or just hit the letter O for overlay. And that'll turn on your overlay and I can see if I missed any areas and use a left and right bracket key to, uh, to change the size of your brush. And also, once you do that pass along the sky, go ahead and turn auto mask off because you don't want it to, to, to mask at this point anymore. So I would just go through there and just clean up and try to get, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, just get any little spots that I missed in there. Okay, hold down the option or alt key if you went too far and you want to get rid of something as well. All right, so let's, uh, let's turn our overlay off so that we can see it. And if I want to see the before and after of my brush, I can toggle it. That's before and that's after. So before, after, sometimes I'll crank up the haze a little bit more. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of clarity. That'll give it even more contrast, a deeper, you know, almost deeper blacks when I start to do it this way. Um, because there's snow and because it's, uh, it's almost got a blue feeling to it, and dehaze will often give things a blue tint, I will counteract that by moving the temperature to the right and adding a little bit of warmth to it. And then uh, and maybe even boosting the whites a little bit just to boost the whites of that snow to give it a little bit more of an impact in that photo as well. So if I go down here and I turn the brush off, that's before and that's after. So that's when I will use dehaze. Uh, one more example. In this case, we do have a little bit of foreground and then we've got background. And, and now we get to the point where you have to decide, you know, what are you trying to get across in the photo? For me, I thought it was still a little bit too hazy, okay? Yes, I like the depth, but there's enough form and contour in this photo that you can still gauge the depth of what's going on here. So I probably still would uh, go in here, grab my, uh, grab my adjustment brush, and go in here and paint a little bit of dehaze onto that mountain in the background there. And even a little bit onto the trees. just to give them a little bit more impact, like so. Uh, again, they tend to take on a blue feeling, so maybe warm that up a little bit there, and uh, even a little bit of clarity can help. But you can take a look at the before and then the after. Subtle little change, but it does, to me, it does give a little bit more prominence to my background than it had before. So this one's kind of in between, you know, I, I don't want to go too far. I might even pull it back a little bit from where I was, but um, this one is a little bit in between in that it does have foreground. It does have that hazy background, but I think I would want to kind of sharpen it and contrast it up just a little bit. Okay, folks, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the tutorial and I will talk to you again real soon.